What is going on, Stallions? Welcome to the Gamer Heaven, where we focus on where gaming started, where it's at, and where it's going. Today, we're going to be installing a second intake fan on the front of my Alienware Aurora R11. This is a 120 millimeter fan, and we are going to be using a splitter method off of the existing intake fan. Let's get it. All right, boys, step one, we're gonna go ahead and power down the R11. The fans we are using today are from Cooler Master, and these are the Silent Fans 120. These are extremely cheap fans, but cheap fans are better than no fans. We have one Dell branded 120 millimeter fan right here. We do have a mechanical hard drive right here that is gonna be removed. All right, boys, if you've never seen behind my R11 before, I do have two cable tied bundles here. This one is the power cable as well as all my USBs. And then this is for my three displays over here. It's a two display port cables and a HDMI. So in order to get the side panel off, you are going to remove this Phillips head screw right here. They're gonna hit these two unlock tabs, one here and one here. You are going to pull this little lever on the side like that and the side panel pops right off and you pull right up and you are inside of your R10, R11, R12. I mentioned all three of those together because they are virtually identical. The only difference is the CPU or central processor unit. Now we're gonna go ahead and unplug the mechanical hard drive from both the power cable and then also the data cable as well. She was a little finicky. Now we're gonna go ahead and pinch this uh, tray right here and it just slides right out. And it's a little warm right now. Keep in mind, this is old technology here. These mechanical hard drives, they actually do get quite warm. Now SSDs and NVMEs, not so much. But uh, mechanical hard drives, they actually have a physical disc in there that's constantly spinning, especially when you're reading and writing. And uh, they're slow, they get fragmented, they, they take more electricity than a SSD or NVMe. Um, they're just not great. So I'm actually rerouting the SATA cable right now. It was held in here by these two clips right here. Hopefully you guys can see that. I might zoom in post, post editing, but there's two clips right here. And they were kind of just, this cable was snaked around there. What I'm gonna try and do is route that down here because I do believe if I remove these two Phillips head screws, um, I can convert one of these two and a half inch caddies down here, which are meant for SSDs to host the uh, three and a half inch drive like that. It actually looks like on this side, this slider right here uh, might actually hinge in or allow this to slide in. If not, it's not a huge deal if I can't um, relocate and use the, the mechanical hard drive as like I mentioned earlier, uh, there's a ton of downsides to mechanical hard drives. But since I already have it, instead of having to sell it or something, I thought maybe I could reuse it. I'm gonna go ahead and remove the GPU to get a little bit more, a uh, little bit more maneuverability in here. Here's the brace for it. Now you're gonna press down on this uh, blue, blue tab right there, and your GPU slides out. Probably should have unplugged it from power first. Wasn't really thinking clearly there. That's okay, we can do it now. If these little back plates come off, just stick them back in. And I'm actually gonna unplug the GPU because we're actually about to redo the thermal pads and paste on this bad boy. So you gotta press down on the little tabs there because you do not wanna yank these out. They do kind of lock into place. And you have your gorgeous 3080 right here. Set that bad boy aside. And here's that NVMe adapter that we installed on the channel previously. And then here you can see the cable runs right here. And there's actually, as you get, guys can see, there's uh, three vacant slots right here. So storage guys on the R10, 11, and 12, as they do use the same MOBO or motherboard, you do have two slots for two and a half inch SSDs at the bottom. You do have one NVMe, uh, PCIe NVMe, uh, which is usually usually occupied by a boot drive from Alienware. Now there's only one slot on this MOBO, which is unfortunate. And also these motherboards are also PCI three, not four. So if you do run an adapter like I do with this um, third party NVMe SSD, it's a Sabrent rocket, very fast, then, then you're not getting the full speeds. Now don't get me wrong, it's still very, very quick. So this one is marked blue, it's SATA zero, then there's one, two, and three. Since this one is a different color, usually what that means on a motherboard is that you have to utilize that one first or it will not recognize additional um, SATA drives. So unfortunately, I was gonna move this down a couple of skoshes, but we're just gonna plug that right back in. And this is where that fan is plugged in right here, which we're probably gonna replace. So let's unplug it. It's a traditional four pin slot. 
And that intake fan goes right here. And it's labeled, sure enough, fan front. Had to take a little break for some spaghetti and meatballs. Not as good as that homemade, but it was still pretty damn good. All right, so we're gonna remove this front tray right here that was originally holding that hard drive in place. You got two Phillips head screws. So I'm pretty excited to do this because I've been wanting to get a little more airflow in this bad boy for a hot minute. Might be hung up on some wires as everything is pretty tight in this little case. It's not really a small form factor, but it's also not a mid-tower ATX either. It's kind of right in the middle. So the Cooler Master fans are in an interesting little box. It basically has this little, uh, it's almost like a little handle here. It's pretty interesting. And you got your screws for mounting right on top. You got four packs of four for the four fans. Lift this up, you see Wire City USA, Population U, some instruction manual. Uh, I don't know how to read, so I'm gonna toss that aside. And then you have your fans in here and we're only gonna need one, maybe two, depending on how frisky I am and how much better this looks in comparison to the stock boy in there. So the audio got kind of wonky in this clip, so I'm just narrating over it now in post-editing, but I plugged these in through the, sp uh, the splitter. You wanna make sure you test this before you actually mount your fans just to make sure they actually work, but the splitter worked absolutely flawlessly. So this splitter and fan kit are linked in the description below. All right, boys, so I got two potential methods that I'm considering of mounting this fan. Both are extremely ghetto, both are extremely effective and will work, and both of them will get me teased by the entire R10, R11 community, but that's totally fine. The first one would be to use some of this double-sided adhesive. This stuff is used for automotive use, like sticking spoilers and body parts to cars. So incredibly strong. I would just put a couple strips there, 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 and there, and basically put it in there like that. Seats in there nice and perfect. It would, wouldn't move around, and actually this would absorb a lot of vibration as well as it is kind of thick and squishy, so that's nice. The second one would be to run some zip ties or plastic cable ties through these holes right here, through those holes right there, which do align perfectly with where the holes are for the fan. So those are the two options that I'm considering. Now you're probably wondering why I'm considering either of those methods. Like, Kevin, don't you have a special caddy for it or anything? No, actually, Dell uses a pretty specific, Dell uses a pretty specific mount here. It's not like they're impossible to get. You can actually hit up Dell and order some of them. However, they take two to three weeks to get to you. And, <clears throat> excuse me, they're kind of expensive and they're gonna do virtually the same thing as the zip tie method or the double-sided ad adhesive method. And I guarantee you, this stuff isn't going anywhere. I guarantee you, zip ties aren't going anywhere. I feel like this is probably a better option because with the zip ties, I'd have to trim them down pretty low. So the like little, so they're not getting caught on anything like the fan itself. Not to mention if I ever do need to take off the fan, I would have to snip those uh, wire ties, which might be a little difficult. As with this, with a good tug, I can probably get it out. And like I said, this would also reduce vibration on that fan too, because like I said, it's kind of like a squish, like a squishy gelatin material. Now there is a method that you can usually use this 3.5 inch caddy to attach your fan, but that's not gonna work for two reasons. One, this the, the holes don't line up, and two, these holes line up, so I'm actually gonna put the three and a half inch caddy at the bottom where the two and a half inch SSD caddy is, and hopefully be able to run my mechanical hard drive down there, which would be kick ass. So this is gonna be used, and it doesn't line up with the holes here anyway. So let's jerry-rig this thing. Let's get a little ghetto, but this bad boy is gonna work, boys. All right, so on the new fan, the Cooler Master, there is arrows on it showing you which way the air flows. Right there, it goes in intake and then down, apparently. And you can also kind of tell, too, from the way the blades are curved, that it's going to be pushing air that away. And also you can tell because the wires are ran through the back like that, so it makes it easier to get uh, plugged into your MOBO, to your motherboard. So we did run this splitter right here which one end goes to the new fan, which is a three pin connector. I'll show that to you guys right now. Is a three pin connector. And the standard fan is a four pin connector, as you guys saw when I first attached it. And that's connected right here through this, through the uh, other side of the two way splitter. And yes, they did work. You wanna make sure you test this before you hook everything back up. And that's with any kind of PC job. That's with any kind of build or PC, um, PC job because it, it sucks to get your case all the way back together just to find out that it didn't work. All right, so arrows, bam, bam. And uh, let's stick this thing in here with that tape, that double-sided tape. Ghetto, I know, but you gotta do what you gotta do, boys. Also, another reason you don't wanna use the method of mounting it to the back of your three and a half inch caddy 
is that this blocks a ton of airflow. Because as you can see, the fan's not going to be free flowing. There's a bunch of um, perforated holes here. You would literally have to take a Dremel or cutting wheel and basically cut this section out, obviously leaving room for the four holes where you're going to mount it. But again, the holes are like out here on the fan because the fan is a lot larger than this. And I'm still using this for the hard drive, so... All right, boys, my ghetto second fan is in there and it is not going anywhere. She's in there solid, boys. So let's go ahead and remove this two and a half inch SSD tray for the three and a half inch mechanical tray. I really do hope it fits super tight with a bunch of other things in there. Give that thing the old Husker do, how do you do? I should probably remove this before I snap it off. So unfortunately, my friends, there is not enough clearance. This, uh, this caddy is quite a bit longer, wider, deeper. It's just bigger in general. And uh, it's running into a bunch of clearance issues with these wires here. Or if you decide to go up front, it's running into the four fan pins, uh, as well as blocking some of the SATA cable, some of the uh, SATA ports. So yeah, this is going to be a no go. I'm going to go ahead and put that two and a half inch tray back in there. Well, sorry, old friend. I tried to save you. All right, fellas, we have our 3080 reassembled with new pads and paste on it. We're going to go ahead and slap it on in there. Get the power cables connected. So it really is super tight inside this case here. To the best of my abilities, I tucked all the cables, try and get some kind of cable management in here. Not that it really matters because this case is completely sealed off. There's no tempered glass side or anything like that, but it really is just really, really tight trying to work in here. So at idle, she is insanely quiet. And I definitely, uh, I can definitely tell that the aftermarket fan that we installed gets better airflow. I did the uh, little lick your finger and and I can definitely tell just by putting my hand in there that that aftermarket Cooler Master fan in there is pushing more air, at least on my finger, and then coincidentally into the actual PC, into the case, than the stock fan, which means we are going to be replacing this one too. But not in this video. This has been a long process thus far because I got all sidetracked with the GPU and started putting thermal paste on there and whatnot. Then I took a little break and yeah. You know what I find extremely interesting? Where we installed this aftermarket fan where there was not a fan by default is exactly where you would actually want a fan. Down here, all it's doing is blowing on the GPU and two SSDs that you probably don't even have down there. Now, the GPU already has its own cooling system. It has two fans, a heat, heat pipes, heat fins, and a heat spreader. Now, over here, you got the power supply unit, you have the motherboard, you have your RAM, and you have your CPU. This is where you need a fan Dell, not down here, but whatever. Ideally, I mean, you should have two intake fans like we now have, but my God, like that really is not a lot of stock cooling to be 110% honest. Now I've had no issues. I've had no no um, overheating issues or anything. Granted, my, my CPU is water cooled. So that does help a lot to keep ambient temperature inside the case down. Holy shit, guys. I am fucking, excuse my language, but effing, overwhelmed right now. This is idling around 33 to 34 degrees Celsius. Um, before, the lowest it would idle at, even with the water cooling, was 40 degrees Celsius. So adding that second fan got us down seven degrees Celsius. Now the GPU is sitting at its regular idle temperature of about 45 degrees Celsius, but that's standard because we didn't add a fan over in that area. We did add one over near the CPU. Now I wish there was a temperature gauge for the RAM over here, but there is not. There's just voltage and TCL and TRAS and all that stuff. But I guarantee you that RAM is running cooler, which means you could probably uh, more aggressively overclock this RAM because it is not going to overheat as easily. And because it's running cooler at 33 degrees, degrees Celsius, it's having no problem boosting itself up to five gigahertz. Absolutely no problem. This is not on the overclock profile either. If you come over here to my home menu, I am on the overclock off setting, which means that when we bump it up to my five gigahertz gaming overclock over here, that this thing is probably gonna run quite a damn bit cooler. Also, uh, sound wise, there is virtually no difference here. It sounds the same as it did before. I used the little cell phone app and literally the decibels were the same as they were before. So zero increase in sound, uh, six to seven degrees Celsius drop in temperature around the CPU and, v and uh, RAM area. That's awesome. And this was super cheap and super easy. All right, boys, we're about to run a CPU benchmark inside a Cinebench R23. And this is gonna be a multi-core CPU test. The last score that we got, that we ran 
with uh, the stock clock and everything was an 11873. I think we can beat that here today. So it seems to be rendering pretty quickly. Uh, fans still haven't ramped up yet, but during this benchmark, they will get to 100%. Oh, you're stepping on daddy's microphone. You're being silly again. Well, boys, the results are in and they are good. We scored about 200 points higher on Cinebench and our temperatures were three Celsius degrees lower during the benchmark. And just to my ears, it wasn't any louder whatsoever. Uh, and then on the cell phone app, it was about zero, uh, 0 0.05 decibels higher, um, which is like pretty much unnegligible. But what is next for the Alienware Aurora R11? Thank you for asking. On the next episode of Pimp My Pre-Built, we're going to be replacing that front fan, the stock fan, with another Cooler Master fan. We're going to be popping off this top shell right here and replacing the stock fan on the AIO or all-in-one water cooler with two fans, a push-pull mechanism. And in another episode after that, we're gonna be adding one, maybe two SSDs and two more sticks of RAM. And eventually I'm thinking this side panel might not look like this anymore. I haven't seen anybody in the Alienware community with a custom plexiglass side. Hmm. Might be time to let that 3080 be seen, boys. Also in the very, very, very near future, like probably a couple days, I'm gonna be doing a full benchmark video with this PC. So we're talking CPU and GPU benchmarks, as well as trying to find the limits of my RAM as well by overclocking the absolute nipples off of it. If you like the video, you guys know what to do. Liking it helps it to get seen by more people, which in turn grows my channel, which I do greatly, greatly appreciate. Encourages me to keep making content like this. Subscribe and uppercut the notification bell so you're alerted when my new videos come online so you don't miss any of the build on the Alienware R11. Oh yeah, and don't let anybody in the comments section tease me about my ghetto fan job. It's working just fine, boys. Don't listen to them, they don't know. Zip ties and duct tape, it's the way. See you guys in the next video.